Here we go! Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Gamer Blake 90, and welcome back to my playthrough theory for Sonic after the sequel. And in this video, we are going through the Foliage Furnace Zone. Which is usually the point in the game where I tend to stop playing it, because... This is it, guys. This is my complete first playthrough of the game that I've been wanting all of y'all to see for, I don't know, how long now. And we're finally getting there. Because after the first act, everything I see is here on out is going to be completely new to me. And I'm excited for what it is we're about to see. So I'm not particularly excited to be dealing with these guys that got bumper balls shielding both sides of them. I think to beat them, yeah, you gotta attack them directly from the top. And there's Mighty the Armadillo! <laughs> a brief cameo in the game that I've been excited for ever since I started up this playthrough. And there he is. Made me wonder, will we see you as a member of the Chaotix crew later on after a sequel? Uh, I don't know, how I got hit there? Oh. Oh, okay. Now I know. Yeah, you got you really, really gotta go fast when trying to avoid these guys altogether. And these guys, too. Which I'm guessing I can't attack head-on, so I dare not try it. Also, what is this? Is that a flamethrower? Wait. Oh! So it's a kind of bridge that you can run across. That's pretty... Well, that is sick. But getting hit by this guy from the side rather than trying to attack it head-on is not sick. I guess I can't attack them at all without getting hurt, so I might as well just not bother with it. Alright, so that bridge could come back, please, so we can get up here. That'd be really nice right now. Thank you. Oh! I was about to say, that was kind of like an aerial spin dash <laughs> in uh, Smash terminology. And also kind of similar to how the Death Egg Zone handled it in Sonic 3, but with some obvious differences. In fact, probably so many differences that there might as well not be any similarities at all. And what in the world is that animation right there? Did Son just turn into a, a rotor himself or something? Uh, <clears throat> Great, that bad nick there is giving me a Mirage Saloon vibe. Come on! Uh, I, I guess I did want to fall down here because the spike shield is always handy to have in a game like this. So we're gonna grab that, speed across that bridge, and... I've learned my lesson. I've learned my lesson. You guys are not surprising me this time around. Nuh-uh. And hey, that crystal right there, is that in Quartz Quadrant? Or am I just imagining things? <laughs> this looks like a really stylized treehouse now that I'm looking around this level. A stylized treehouse built inside a forest. Well, obviously. Alright, let's grab that checkpoint. A stylized treehouse mixed in with elements from what feels like Quartz Quadrant with the crystals there. Along with some... possibly some elements in Sonic 2's, um... Uh, tree level, which got scrapped before it, it actually got sent into production. I think that's what I'm thinking, but I could be wrong. Oh. Okay, I think it because we had that spike shield on deck that we were able to attack that... that bandit that popped out of the ground to begin with. Otherwise, I don't think we were going to have that much luck. You see what I mean? I, I think that the spike shield is the best in the game, hands down. There's not a doubt about it. I would prefer the electric shield still, but this is a suitable replacement. Oh crap! How I managed to not get hit right there, I had no idea. Because I made a point to just spin dash past these goons every single time, and I... These guys are everywhere. And the fact that... Um... That the screen output I'm playing on for this game is pretty small, but it's hard to prepare for them in advance, like you have to know that they're coming. Like the most Sonic levels, you have to like play them over and over without studying their layouts, until you get to the point where you can play through them without even doing so much as blinking. Which in other words is me in like, a good number of Sonic games. Not all of them though, and this one is obviously not one of them, because I believe I've already confessed and not ever finishing this game. Okay, so Foliage Furnace Act 2. Alright, this is new to me. I've definitely never been here, but I am getting a Sonic Spinball vibe from that launcher that we just went inside just now. If any of you play Sonic Spinball, you might remember the Lava Powerhouse, which was one headache of a level. Luckily, it only had three Chaos Emeralds to collect as opposed to the later levels where you had to collect way more than three, 
while trying your best to strong arm a game that, well, just didn't control very well. Not so much of a Sonic game, because it wasn't meant to feel entirely like a Sonic game, but rather a pinball game with Sonic elements. And look at that. Perhaps most fittingly, we have the fire shield on hand and- Is that Mighty? Whoa, what is he doing? What did he just- Um... <laughs> well, Mighty came in with the stage just now, unlocking that spring from what looked like a fireball, but I'm pretty sure would still have been able to hurt us even if we had the fire shield, judging from the looks of the attack right there, and I totally messed that up. And the bad nick doesn't respawn too. That's terrific. So we're not gonna be able to get up there, are we? Ah, I should have known, I should have known. The fire shield is not adequate protection for guys like that. And the bad nick's still not respawning. Uh, could I? Okay, I can't time my jump to increase my velocity off that launch there. So, oh well, we're just gonna have to take the lower route. If times like this, then it would have been so helpful to have the higher ground. <laughs> Y'all got the reference? No? Probably not. Okay. So, what do we have here next? Ah! That obviously gotta be lava directly below us, so let's not fall into that. No, sir. I'm not trying to get cooked. <laughs> no, go away, please. This is not wacky workbench. I'm not trying to put up with you! Whoa! And we have to deal with the ground falling out from beneath our feet. That's always fun, isn't it? And those guys definitely aren't fun. Could they, like, take a hike, please? Do I get literally no chance to attack them at all? Looks like a solid yes right about now. Whoa, 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 Sonic, slow it down there. We're not trying to go that fast across a layout like this. There's no way. Mm-mm. Mmm. Mm. Looks like an oversized Cheetos ball there. Great. Now it's making me hungry. And I already ate breakfast! <laughs> what is that down there? Oh! Oh, I, I think we found a way out of the furnace. Well, not entirely, but there is a checkpoint. And I figured as much. Those guys that pop out of the ground, you cannot beat without a spike shield. You absolutely have to have one on, on hand. If you're to stand any chance. And what is that dome in the background? Yo, that said hilltop at the upper left. We cannot be back near hilltop though. This is in Sonic 2. Like we're playing after the sequel. This connects the events of Sonic 2 and 3. So hilltop? Oh. Oh, I know what this is. These larger but a position horizontally. You gotta tie them so you go from one to the next using the jump button. Oh look, more Cheetos balls. And we're not gonna be able to spin Dash past me for free. They gotta take that guy out first. Now we're off. Uh, oh! Mm. <laughs> Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I had to focus for a second there. That made me super nervous. For n not ever going through a layout like that. But I guess years and years of reflexes owned in Sonic games came in handy in that instance, didn't it? That's it, the second act. So we have Act 3, but we're still inside the furnace, I see. Are we gonna go inside that dome that we saw in the second act, perhaps? What is that, a light switch? Uh... What is that? Was that a train that sped right by us? Okay, those lights are signaling the coming of the train, aren't they? Mm-hmm. I took my time there because I wasn't sure what was about... Uh, that train's gonna hurt us if we run- if it runs right into us, won't it? I'm not taking chances. Yeah, we're not gonna go above that track yet. Those lights are basically a warning sign, so this is definitely not a level I'm gonna be able to speed through unless I pick my opportunities carefully. Alright, luckily there, we avoid that track. We should be fine. Gonna ball up! <laughs> yeah, ball up probably isn't the best phrase I could have come up with. <laughs> I wasn't sure of what to... I wasn't sure of what would have been more appropriate though. Oh wait, I think I do know one! I'll steal a phrase from Gene Street Fighter V. Light it up. <laughs> oh, no, 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 come on! I am not trying to deal with these guys hanging from the ceiling right now! Whew! If that platform went too low and I was standing on top of it, I more than likely would have gotten hit. 
Ah! It was exactly what I was afraid of, but I didn't even hit the jump button and it launched me anyway! That was automated! I thought these things had to be activated manually, but I guess not. The more you know, right? Mm. There's a train coming, isn't there? There's a train coming! We're about to get slammed! I was... Ugh. Yo, I know the commentary is all over the place right now, but I'm nervous, okay? <laughs> I haven't ever dealt with this level in my life, so I'm trying as fast as I can to get adjusted. But, all things considered, I think we're doing reasonably well! Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. Yeah, you cannot just strong arm this uh this section here. Especially with those guys up top. I have a feeling we would have been knocked out of our spinning animation had they hit us. And we're not trying to have that. Light it up. Mm -hmm. ah, I, I'm I'm glad that I built a habit of that I developed a habit of slowing down now and then, because- OH GOD! Oh god, there's a track here, there's a track here. Uh, 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 I was not ready for that. But that was partly my fault for not paying attention, because looking back, there were lights right there that I should have noticed. That would have helped my case, for sure. Um, I'm going to- Level's gonna give me all kinds of heart attacks, man. Are we at the end? No? How much further? Oh. <laughs> okay, I guess that is the end of the level. And I was starting to be like, wait, we're still not done with it yet? When I saw more rings coming up along that last track. But thank goodness, we're at the end of that act. That was unpleasant. Yo, both are gonna. We're gonna play a boss battle involving the trains, aren't we? Uh, what's going on? Eggman's got his own train? So, what is this? Like... Are we gonna have to swap between trains repeatedly to hit him? Is that what this boss battle is? Be warned, I may lose a few lives here trying to figure out what exactly this boss entails. So... This is one of those bosses where movement is autom- is, uh, kinda automated because it's a constant side-scroller. I should have known I was going to be able to attack him just like that. Uh, hmm. And obviously I'm not going to be able to hit him from below because of that bumper ball. But what exactly is that arrow signaling right there? I guess it has to, um... Hmm. Well, way to jump completely over him. That's going to help my case. Alright, so the, the green lights signal a charge up of the fireball around um, both sides of Eggman, and the red light indicates that he's about to fire. Alright, but simple enough. And luckily there are rings constantly spawning along the track. That will definitely help my case. Now if I can just not soar directly over him while I'm trying to hit him, that would be appreciated. But we're getting the hang of it. This was kind of simple. So what's that track up there? Oh no, that wasn't a track, that was a train. Never mind. And he has a beam attack to go along with his standard fireball. It probably goes off when he's lower on health. Whew! If Eggman had not died in that instance, that beam attack would have definitely come out and would have been screwed. But I don't think we are done with this boss battle yet. Because he's retreating inside the craft. And there are... And there's cannons coming up at the side of a train. That we have to attack, don't we? I think we have to hit them. While trying not to get hit ourselves. Ah, uh, there's the weak point! Right when Eggman pops up in that window, you have to hit it. And he's not dead yet, is he? Man, you are persistent. And I'm starting to think I can't actually attack these cannons. I'm starting to think I can't attack them. I have to just avoid them. Okay, so... The silver lines coming out of each of the cannons do not necessarily reflect where they will aim at you. They'll just lock onto your last location and then try to fire away at you. And then, of course, the cannons will level up. So they're a bit wider in attack radius. Shoot. I'm about to die. <laughs> oh, God. 
Oh, Light Pepper, thank you for giving us more rings to work with. Because I'm pretty sure by this point I would have died if there was not a constant string of rings going along this... This side scroller. For a first attempt, that was mostly not bad. But then we got to, like, phase two of the boss battle, and things went wacky. Hey, Mighty, what's up? <laughs> Poor Tails. Got the raw end of a deal. And Tails is standing there like, Wait, Sonic, you're taking off without me? Whatever happened to friendship? Wait, E.G.? Is that what that said? Yo, Tails looks fed up. <laughs> Sonic reunites the Mighty, gets overexcited, and then just leaves Tails out of the fun. That is so not cool. <laughs> Uh-oh. I smell a bit of friction between Sonic and Tails. Just like in Sonic Lost World. Except... When they wrote the story of Sonic Lost World, they set it up for a potential rift in Sonic and Tails' everlasting friendship, and then they never really capitalized on it. They just made it immediately after. But I have a feeling that for after the sequel, it's not gonna be as short-lived, this animosity here. Because Sonic... In all fairness, Sonic uh, previously collaborated with Mighty and Ray when it came to Sega Sonic, which was a game that was specifically for arcades involving key ball controls, and that was part of why Sega initially had trouble p uh, porting Sega Sonic over to consoles, because of how the controller first made. They said that themselves, if you were wondering. And that would have been a game I would have loved to play through on the updated console generation, but we're probably not going to get that anytime soon, if at all. And also, those mountains right there, those look similar to, what was it, the Azure Lake multiplayer level from Sonic 3? I think that's part of what inspired this level, looking at it, along those tracks right there. It's making me think back to that city level. I think it was Sunset Star Zone. That's the one. That's the level I was trying to recall when I was last playing um, uh, Cyan City Zone, and it wouldn't come to my mind till now. <laughs> but yeah, I better end the video off here, because Sonic's getting awfully impatient, as usual. That'll do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. If y'all like what you saw, just hit that like button, leave me a comment, I'm always curious to know what you think, and don't forget to hit that sub button if you want to keep up with all my Sonic content, or my non-Sonic content. And also, as you hit the subscribe button, make sure to ring that bell and enable all notifications, because I know that some people still won't get notifications with the channel even after subbing, so I just want to remind y'all, the bell is there for a reason, and YouTube itself is that reason, but you know how it is. That'll do it for me, guys. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in this next level. Take care. Later!